we go. All right, so today I'm gonna to be talking about Unity for automotive and AEC. It is gonna be a little bit more focused on AEC specifically. My name is Dan Miller. I work for Unity Technologies as an XR evangelist. It means I focus a lot on augmented and virtual reality, travel around, tell people about it, make a lot of projects and things like that. Uh, if you do wanna follow some of my work, you can find me on Twitter at DanMillerDev where I try to kind of post updates that's happening from Unity uh, as well as various things. So I wanna kind of start off first by talking a little bit about what's happening at Unity, how we're kind of evolving as a tool and a platform. And um, I was gonna kind of pull the audience who here has heard of Unity, um, but throughout the day yesterday, it seems like a lot of people here are using Unity, fairly familiar. And really what we're doing as a platform is we're seeing ourselves more as this kind of creation engine where the traditional use cases are in the gaming space. And this is really where our heart is still kind of focused and centralized around from obviously mobile gaming in both AR and VR as well as gaming on the consoles. But really what we're seeing is that people are using Unity in all different spaces. And as a company, as we evolve, we wanna make sure that we focus on specific spaces and solve some of the hardest problems that they're having. So what we're doing is we're looking at ATM, or Automotive Transportation and Manufacturing, Architecture, Engineering and Construction, or AEC, and Film. And Film is really more of a broad kind of media and entertainment and how Unity can be used in these uh, specific industries. I'm gonna touch lightly on ATM and then kind of go into AEC and talk about some of the products and offerings we have for that. So for automotive, um, there's you know, a lot of people when we talk about how we're going into these different industries, they're really curious about where we're being used and how we can be used. And the reality is that it's really at almost every stage of development. When you're first thinking about a car and how you're designing it, to when you're actually showing it off on the show floor in a potentially a digital application. We're used by some of the top uh, OEMs, and there's a lot more information on our solutions page if you're interested in that. Some of the top use cases are the kind of early iteration and design experience, where you can make an interactive VR or AR application where people are collaborating in the same space or in different spaces around the world. We're also seeing things like training and guidance. How can you help the workers that need to actually develop these cars, whether it be on the assembly line or kind of putting together things early, you can kind of walk through a lot of VR simulation and guidance, and I think you're seeing a lot of that here uh, at this conference. Also, as mentioned earlier, sales and marketing, you know, creating a interactive application to view your car, whether it's red, blue, if it's driving in the snow, if you're driving in the beach, it's really easy to kind of create these visualizations, add some light interactivity with Unity, and then allow a user or a potential buyer to kind of customize away. We're also seeing things in the human machine, or machine interface, whether it's the new um, kind of era of cars that have a lot more interactivity in things like their dashboard, as well as their display panels. And last but not least, in automotive simulation. We have an entire machine learning team and product that is dedicated to integrating machine learning into Unity. And we're seeing these car companies, um, rather than you know, driving autonomous vehicles around the city, which is one part of it, is they can simulate the entire city digitally and then run these simulations 24-7, 365 and really allow their vehicles to learn and train their, their models without having to be on the actual road. And now let's talk a little bit about AEC. So it stands for Architecture, Engineering, and Construction. This is actually a visualization of our London office that we had made in the development process so we could uh, kind of tweak and look at different use cases, different types of flooring, and things like that. So similarly to automotive, there's lots of kind of different use cases either at the kind of early iteration. We also saw a lot of great use cases in the previous panel that was here where you can start to use Unity, whether it's in AR or VR, for your kind of visualization, your design, your iteration, and really your decision making. What we're seeing a lot of in the automotive, or sorry, in the AEC space is really how can these different 
kind of teams work together, start to resolve and understand problems digitally before they manifest physically. So we're seeing things like design and data visualization, where you're actually going in, making decisions and things like that, as well as being able to understand the different parts of a building, maintaining that BIM information, visualizing it to the user or the client. Of course, in sales and marketing, when you're really trying to kind of um, you know, push your pitch or your product, trying to um, kind of secure a deal for a building, you can use Unity, whether it's in AR or VR, kind of put the user in there so that they can make decisions early on. And then last but not least, similar to automotive, we're seeing a lot of uh, innovation in training and safety, where you can you know, hook up entire um, kind of machine uh, controls and rigs in a VR space. You can start to practice what you're doing um, before you're actually on the job site, before you're operating uh, heavy machinery. So what we saw at Unity is that a lot of people were already interacting and developing in this space. But one of the biggest challenges, especially in automotive and especially in AEC, is how do you get CAD data out of the, out of the programs like Revit and Rhino into Unity? And after you get it in, uh, out of those programs and into Unity, how do you maintain that BIM information? How do you maintain that metadata that's critical to each single piece of your model or of your data? So what we did is we partnered with a company called Pixies. This is a company based out of France, and they actually develop a Unity plugin that allows you to import this data directly into Unity. On top of this plugin, they also have a rule engine that allows you to go in and process the model, add different uh, effects, do things like change the materials and things like that. So one of the big advantages that we really saw with Pixies is that A, it can import over 30 different types of CAD data, things like IFC, as well as a lot of the other popular ones. And really, it's also very optimized for speed. You can see large data sets being imported here, and I'm gonna be kind of walking through a demo of exactly how the import happens and then talking a little bit about the rules and processing after you have that data into Unity. There is two offerings available for Pixies. So there's the Pixie plugin, which is actually directly integrated into Unity. It gives you additional features like the rule engine. and actually has a drop down and integrates with the create menu in Unity, which you'll see here in a moment. And then there's the Pixie Studio. This is actually a standalone piece of software that you can use to process your data. And we usually recommend this if it's a little bit, um, if it's a very large data set or it's somewhat intensive that you need to uh, make sure that you're not either losing data and things like that. And one of the things to keep in mind is that when Pixies imports data into Unity, it does create polygons based on it. And there's a lot of kind of different settings you can do for things like UV creation uh, and other sort of optimization steps. And sometimes it takes a little bit uh, of time to A, kind of understand what your data is, how you can optimize it, and what sort of considerations you need. So Pixie Studio is kind of the standalone option that allows you to do that before bringing it into Unity. All right, so now what I wanna do is basically just kind of walk through a demo that I created in Unity using the Pixie plugin to import a residential model, talk about how you can use the rule engine, and just walk through some of the steps for that. So for this, originally I'd planned to kind of do this as a live demo, but instead I just kind of chopped up some videos of me basically doing the same thing. And if you guys are not familiar, this is the Unity engine here. Um, we are in a basically empty scene that has a couple things added for mixed reality, which we'll see here in a moment uh, near the end, as well as some of the lighting and effects have kind of been changed there. So the first thing we do is we can just go up here to the Pixie menu that's now added to our editor because we've imported the plugin. We can tell it to import a file and we're gonna select that middle IFC. Next, we go ahead and hit import. This is this uh, kind of pre-configuration settings that we're seeing here. And the one checkbox that I did check there is actually to make sure that we generate UVs. 
And this is, if you're not familiar, is kind of the coordinate space for um, basically putting textures on top of objects. If you don't do this, things are gonna look a little off uh, on the rendering side. So it's, uh, it's kind of subtle, but we've actually imported the model into Unity, but you might notice that you don't actually see anything. And the reason for that is right now, the model is kind of off in world space, um, out of view of what we're seeing right now because we're around the origin. And that's actually the kind of pivot point that was baked into the original model here. Now, in Unity, it's always a good idea to kind of keep a lot of your objects for things like lighting and physics around the origin. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply a rule to this imported model to basically just recenter the model in our scene. Now, this demo happens to come with a handful of uh, kind of rules that we built for it. But as you'll see, and as I kind of walk through, you'll see that the rule engine is fairly easy to start to A, create your own kind of custom rules specifically for your workflows, as well as override for kind of custom workflows and custom tools that you might need. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go and select my rule over here that says center and scene. And you'll see over here on the right, what we're basically doing is we're grabbing the latest imported model. We're saying we wanna modify this model, move it to the origin, and then we're basically setting it to zero, zero, zero. Now once I run that rule, which is that button there at the bottom of the rule, it then kind of centers our model here in the, at the origin of Unity, and now we can kind of work uh, with it a little bit easier. If you are familiar with um, some kind of Unity workflows, these rules are basically scriptable objects. So they have some kind of custom UI on top of them that allow you to easily uh, potentially kind of move them between projects and things like that, if you've imported the Pixie plugin. Now, the next thing we can do is you might notice a lot of these trees, and if you've ever worked in something like Revit, you notice these are kind of the classic billboarded trees where they're just kind of idling there they don't actually look like trees, and they really kind of look a little odd, uh, especially when you're starting to kind of orbit around this, this model here in 3D. So what we can do here is we can go and create our own rule. So we're going into the Create menu, creating a new rule, calling it Replace Trees, and what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna start to build up this rule on the right-hand side there. So the first thing I'm doing is grabbing a reference to the latest model, Next, I'm gonna start to filter based on the property of the BIM information with the different objects in these models. What I'm doing here is I'm looking for a property called reference and a name called Aspen. That happens to be what all of these trees line up to. And once I've filtered out all of those uh, objects here in the imported model, then I'm just gonna do what we call a replace where I'm grabbing a reference to, this happens to be a birch tree, and I'm replacing it, those original models, with the birch tree model here. Now, just to make it look a little bit better and add some kind of randomness to it, I'm actually randomly rotating it and scaling it so that not every tree looks the same. You can see the trees there, and once I hit the run button, now they're populated in the model there. So this is kind of the basic level of what we can do as we start to process this model. The really cool thing is, is that once we set up and understand the rules that we want on our model with the specific workflows, we can actually run all of these rules at import time. So if all of your models and all of your data is imported and processed and has the same naming conventions and has the same BIM information, you can do this once and then bring in as many models as you need to. Now, we've added some trees. Let's go ahead and do another simple rule, which is almost identical, and it's just gonna look for references based on lights. So a similar thing, we're grabbing our imported model, we're filtering it based on a metadata property, and now we've added some lights to our scene. It's starting to look a little bit better. This is kind of a dusk, uh, nighttime scene here, and what we're doing is we're filtering it based on those lighting fixtures. We know that this model came in with specific lighting fixtures. We can go and filter them by that, and then we just instantiate a point light on each of those fixtures at the origin. 
Now to make things look a little bit better, we can also go ahead and swap the materials. Now this one's a bit more complex as it just has a lot more material references. But now you can see we're starting to look a little bit more like a real model. We've grabbed some uh, materials and textures here from Substance. You can see some of the wood and flooring there. And again, we're bringing in these references of these names that we had in Revit, uh, swapping them with certain materials that we already have in Unity. You can grab these off things like the Asset Store. And now we're kind of uh, going in and still start starting to process that model. Of course, with Unity, if you want to kind of uh, increase the visual fidelity, these are kind of these final polish steps. You can add things like post-processing. So this is just me enabling a post-processing. You get some nice bloom, ambient occlusion, kind of just putting these final touches on your product. Now, all of this is in 3D. We're all kind of seeing this in Unity. We've started to process it. And now what I want to do is I want to basically take this environment convert it and add uh, tool tips to it so that I can start to visualize the BIM information with each of the objects in the environment in VR. So to do this, I'm gonna do a little bit of custom work where I'm actually going to create my own custom rule in Pixies and then start to filter the property. So to do that, we go to the rule engine. Instead of creating a new rule set, we're creating a custom action. Now. This part's gonna get a little bit technical, but I did just kinda wanna show it to you and kind of explain that the way Pixies is set up and the way this rule engine is, is it's really easy to start to extend and add the custom functionality that you might need. So what we have here is the actual custom rule that gets auto-generated by Pixies. You can see things like the name right there that I'm about to highlight, and so you can actually kind of create these own rules under your own sort of filters. They even give you a specific comment that says your code here. That's where you put the logic that you're doing as you're running through and processing this model as it loops through the list of game objects here. So what does this custom rule that I made look like? It's basically looping through the list there. I've just replaced that your code here with a small uh, kind of for loop, which is looping through all of our game objects. Then I'm checking, hey, does this game object contain the metadata component, which is what holds the BIM information? If it does, spawn this tooltip and basically set it at the origin of this object. You might notice there at the top as well, I've named uh, this tooltip add tooltips, and I've put it under the imaginary filter Dan's firm. So now, back in, in Unity and in Pixies, I can go create a new rule set similar to what we've been doing before. I'm just gonna rename this to Dan's tooltip rule, and then we can go in here, filter it based on the latest import model, and then go ahead in here, and as we expand upon this rule, you now see that we have Dan's firm, add some tooltips, and then I can link up this MRTK tooltip that is part of the mixed reality toolkit I happen to be making this for the mixed reality headsets. Now, once I run that rule, I've placed a tooltip object at every single game object in this process. You can see is that kind of yellow orb there. And what'll happen is that when I hop into VR and highlight that with my controller, we'll actually visualize the data associated with it. So let's see what that looks like. So here's me in the Unity editor. I simply hit the play button, turn my controller on, uh, I've also done a small rule here that basically puts colliders on the floor. And now we can simply aim at these different tooltips and get kind of the first piece of BIM information associated with them, which is the name of the actual object there. So you can see how we've been able to kind of extend this rule engine, add our own slight custom logic, and then kind of modify what's, what's available with the imported model. Now I did just kind of want to show two screenshots here. The way that Pixies works, and one of the real big advantages of it, is it actually creates a navigable transform hierarchy in Unity. So you can see that right now I'm selecting assembly 2641 chair desk, and on the right there is all that metadata or BIM information associated with it. Similarly here, we have things like basic roof 
eight feet level standing scan, blah, blah, blah. And you can see that all of this information is kind of brought into Unity. So if you have specific naming conventions, if you have specific information tied to your model, you can either access it potentially via the name as well as that metadata component associated with it. So I really just wanted to end here on uh, a couple kind of final notes. One, really consider Pixies if you're looking to import your CAD data into Unity, as well as looking at how you can enable some of the processing on it, like I did here. Also, you know, with Pixies, really start to consider your specific workflow. What are some things that you might need? How can you enable the rule engine? And what can you do for some customization? Uh, if this talk wasn't enough, you know, Unity is very kind of serious about AEC and ATM specifically. We have several people here um, at the show that are specifically working on those teams. So if you guys have some questions and things like that, definitely come up to me afterwards. And I mean, I think everyone kind of being at this conference really understands this, but there's a lot of potential in the AR VR space outside of gaming. And this is something that Unity is really focusing on as we broaden our product. Uh, and last but not least, just keep making awesome stuff with Unity. It's been a really fun conference uh, to see what everyone's been making. Thanks. Thank you.